Welcome to our video tutorial for question 7 of our daily review. Question 7 is asking us to interpret data and graphs that are given to us, and it actually gives us two instructions. The first says if you are given a story, you need to sketch a graph for that situation. And the second part says if you're given a graph, you need to write a story that represents that situation. Then once you've done that, you're going to explain in the graph the y-intercept, the rate of change, and whether or not the graph is increasing or decreasing. Let's go ahead and start by simply describing those two terms, which are really important when we're talking about our graphs. The first was y-intercept, and the y-intercept is always where our graph starts. Uh, another way to think about that is where is y when x is equal to 0? In this case, it's called the y-intercept because this is where the line will cross the y-axis on the graph. Our second key vocabulary term is the rate of change, which is the slope on our graph. Or we can define that as how many steps of y per one step of x. And finally, we're just asked to describe whether or not the graph is increasing or decreasing. Um, and maybe it does both of those things, or maybe it stays the same. We're just asked to describe those forms of what's happening in our graph. So let's go ahead and start with an example of a few stories that we can create a graph from. So here I have three stories, and we're going to draw a graph for each of these three stories. And then we'll talk about the y-intercept, the rate of change, and whether or not the graph is increasing or decreasing. Our first graph says Tom took his dog for a walk to the park. He set off slowly and then increased his pace. At the park, Tom turned around and walked slowly back home. We're looking for clue words that are describing for us um, what is happening in this particular story. The first thing that I'm going to note is that the things that I am going to be comparing in this particular graph are going to be time and distance, how far um, Tom has traveled from uh, his starting point over how much time. I'm going to notice that he started off slowly, so my graph is going to start kind of slow, and then he increased his pace. So you can see that my graph increases, um, and then he turned around and walked home, uh, and walked slowly back home. So you can see that the distance is getting closer to where he started, but it was a constant rate um, on his way back home. Okay, now a couple of things to note here. We want to describe our y-intercept, um, which is where that graph would start. He's starting at his home in this particular graph. Um, and then we would want to describe the rate of change. Well, in this case, it's not a constant rate of change. We might describe a positive rate of change, another positive rate of change, and then a negative rate of change. We might use words like steep, right? Or we might use words like steady. In this case, we don't have to come up with a specific value. Um, we don't have to come up with that specific value because this actually changes over time. So we simply want to describe what that rate of change is doing. So I've described those places where it's positive. I've also described those places where it's negative. Um, we might describe places that are steep or less steep or steady or constant or changing, some of those types of things. Uh, and finally, um, we could describe this graph as both increasing and decreasing. So we would use both of those terms for this particular one. Let's look, look at our next example. It says Tom rode his bike east from his home up a steep hill. After a while, the slope eased off. At the top of the hill, he raced down to the other side. Again, we're going to look for keywords that are going to give us some clues about what's happening in this particular problem. Again, I'm going to notice that we are comparing distance and time again. Now, all of these graphs are not going to be comparing distance and time. These ones today just are. So make sure you're looking for what are the things that you're comparing in this.
Um, now, he starts at home. He's riding up a steep hill. So I can imagine if he's riding up a steep hill, that's going to uh, become a little bit more difficult. Um, the slope eased off at the top. And so he's going to be uh, maybe at a uh, constant distance away there. Uh, but then he's going to race down to the other side. So he's going to go really fast. And same thing here. We would want to describe where we're starting. Um, we would want to describe whether or not we're positive. Here we have a slope of zero. Here we have a slope of uh, that's a negative slope. Right, we could again describe this as really steep, um, and this graph both includes increasing and decreasing. Finally, we have our last example, which is Tom went for a jog. At the end of his road, he bumped into a friend, and his pace slowed. Notice his pace slows, but it doesn't stop. Um, when Tom left his friend, he walked quickly back home. Again, we're looking for the things that we're describing, as well as some of the words that are giving us clues uh, for what is happening here. Now, again, for all three of these graphs, I don't need any specific numbers. I'm just trying to represent this situation. So I haven't labeled um, you know, the numbers on my graphs themselves. I don't need specific slopes. We just want to represent this situation. So um, he's going for a jog. Maybe it's a little bit steeper than some of our other things. Um, and then he bumps into a friend. Now he's still continuing. It says he's still continuing, but his pace slows. So I need to show that that um, changes the rate that that's, that's going. And then when Tom left his friend, he quickly walked back home. So we should show that that's a steep uh, change there. And again, we would want to show where that graph is going to start, right? Positives, negative slopes, right? This is the steepest part of our uh, slope. So we're just looking to describe what is happening in this particular graph. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we could take a graph and write a story for that graph. So here I have two graphs, and we just simply want to write a, a story that could represent the situation that created this graph. And again, we don't have specific numbers, so I don't need to say that we are starting at you know, a height of 1,500 feet or 2,000 feet or 15 feet. That part doesn't matter. We simply want to make sure that we're representing the situation for this graph. I'm going to notice that this time I'm comparing depth and time. Um, and so my story should indicate depth, something that's going up or down. And in this case, I'm going to write a story maybe that looks something like this. I walk from the parking lot down to the trail. Notice that I've used that clue word down, which tells me my depth is decreasing. I've also used that word walk, and that tells me am I going fast or am I going slow. Then I ran down the trail. That's again telling me direction and speed or rate of change. Um, then I stood at the edge of the lake. So my depth is not changing over time. I'm staying at, the, at that spot. And then maybe I walked all the way down to the shore, put my feet in the water, and ended the day there. Um, for the second situation, you're going to notice that it's going the other direction. So our story should represent something that would work with that situation. Here, I'm going to say that I hiked up the hill, and then I walked along the edge of the lookout. Notice that the, the depth or the height in this case is staying the same, um, but I can still be moving, but I'm just on the edge of that lookout. Um, then I hiked the last part up to the top of the hill, and I stood at the top. Again, we're using those clue words that are telling us, are we, are we um, walking? Are we running? Are we standing? Um, what is it that we are doing? So that gives you a sense of how to both interpret graphs and create graphs based on the stories that are given to us, as well as some of those key pieces of information that are part of our graphs themselves.